Chapters 2, 3, and 4 were about descriptive statistics. So that's when we're trying to describe a data set. What do we see in it based on measures of center, measures of spread, how does a histogram look, a box plot, what if there's x and y, can we come up with a linear regression model, and what does the scatter plot look like? In chapters 8, 9, 10, 11, and beyond, we want to infer, right? Inferential statistics is where real statistics lies. So we want to be able to make those leaps into the unknown because inferential statistics is when you take your sample and you infer about the unknown population because you can't go poll everybody. You can't do a census all the time. So to be able to make that leap, we need to have a mathematical system for dealing with uncertainty mathematical laws and rules, and those will be the rules of probability. So probability is the mathematics of uncertainty. So it will give us numerical ways to measure the future, to measure things that we don't know about yet. And that'll be very, very, very powerful. Now to be fair, probability literally could be, well, course after course after course on its own. So we're just going to try to hit the highlights so that we can do what we need to do in later chapters. Now before we can do any of that, because we're going to use probability for the rest of the class, right, even at past 5, 6, and 7, because we're going to use it to do the things we need to do in chapters 8, 9, 10, and so on, we need to have some definitions and rules. So that's why we start in section 5.1. So the rules of probability. So first thing we're going to do is the definitions. So probability is any, excuse me, a probability experiment is any process with uncertain results that can be repeated. And the probability is the proportion of times the event occurs in a long run as a probability experiment is repeated over and over again. Now, these two things taken together are called the frequentist definition of probability. There are actually other ways to deal with probability, but for our purposes in statistics, this is the most appropriate for us at this level. So probability measures the likelihood of events that have yet to occur, things that haven't happened yet. So things with the future, things that are uncertain. And the symbol for it is P parentheses something. So if it's an outcome O, you call it P parentheses O. And if that's looking familiar to you, if you've ever been in algebra class, you might have seen this notation. It's function notation. It's saying F is your function name and X is your input. It's very much the same for probability. Probability will be a function for us. Every outcome will have its own associated probability and can only have one probability. That makes it a function. So the parentheses there is not acting as multiplication. The parentheses there is acting as the name for this thing. So it's the probability of O. Of is the parentheses. All right, so um, we write probabilities as decimals, percents, or fractions. We use different ones depending on different contexts. Decimals get used a lot in statistics. Fraction gets used more in like pure probability. Uh, percents are really useful for interpretation pieces. So it's which one you use depends on the context of what you're looking at. The sample space is the collection of all possible outcomes. Now collection is a fancy name for list. That's what we mean. So you make a list of all your possible outcomes. Often because it's a mathematical list, you'll actually put the list in those curly bracket things. So those get used a lot for, those, um, for the sample space. All right, so let's look at an example here. We have the American roulette wheel. Now the American roulette wheel is an example we're going to go back to a lot in this chapter. So it has 38 spaces. The 0 and 0, 0 spaces are green in color. The rest of the spaces are numbered 1 through 36 and are evenly distributed red and black. Now if you're thinking, geez, do I have to put that on my note sheet? No, you do not, because I actually give it to you in your appendix note sheet. Remember that this exam notes packet in your appendix of your course pack will be given to you when you take your exams. And I actually have a bunch of probability information in there. So these are the most common types of dice. We'll talk about that later. We'll come up with this distribution later. The standard poker deck. Um, a lot of people don't play cards, so if you don't, this is what the poker deck looks like. Probability rules. And then there's all the roulette stuff. So there's two pages of roulette stuff. So you don't have to memorize it. You just have to use it. And you'll notice that the zero spaces, zero or zero, zero, and American roulette are green. 
that's something to keep in mind. So if you're colorblind, make sure that you note it. Um, it's written actually on that notes packet right here, that the zero spaces are green and all the rest are evenly split between red and black. All right, so what does it mean when a casino says that their roulette wheel is fair? Well, to be fair means that each of those spaces is equally likely. Each of the numbers has just as likely a chance of, of occurring as any other. The way that this game is played is that it's a ball that's kind of bouncing around a spinning wheel and each of the wheel numbers has little pockets and eventually the ball will stop bouncing and it'll land in one of them. So the ball has an equal chance of landing in any one of the numbered spaces. I'm sure it shows up in a James Bond movie of some kind. It's, it seems like the kind of game they would play in James Bond movies. All right, now the sample space is the list of all possible outcomes. Now in the American Roulette, there's 38 possible outcomes. I'm not going to list all of them. I'll just put a little ellipsis in there for dot, dot, dot. So I'll start with 0, 0, and 0. And then it just goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 36. Right? It's just the numbers. Remember that they're, they're all there. You can look through the wheel if you want. But when they made the wheels, they made them so they're kind of randomly around there. It's not entirely random, there's a pattern to it, but I didn't invent the wheel, it's just how it is. Alright, what is P of 4 in words and find its value? Alright, so here I'm just checking, do you know what P parentheses 4 means, right, in this context, and then find its value. So in words, what P parentheses 4 means is the probability, because that's the capital P, that the ball lands on the four space at random. Right? That's all it means. Now its value, that's something else. right? Because the value would be, well the four space is one of these spaces and on the American Roulette wheel there's 38 spaces total. So it would be 1 out of 38. Now if you want a decimal for that, take 1 divided by 38 and you get 0 0.0263 which would be 2.63% or so. There it is. All right, um, just a little note. In general, we round probability. If we're going to use decimals, we usually use four decimal places for decimals. Um, if we're doing uh, fractions, obviously we just leave the fraction. Sometimes you reduce it, sometimes not. Um, and then percentages, eh, it depends on the context, but sometimes two decimal places, sometimes three, and so on. So I did four decimal places in there. Continuing on with our definitions, an event. An event is any collection of outcomes from a probability experiment. An event can, can consist of one outcome or many outcomes. If it's only one outcome, that's called a simple event. So for example, the four up above, that's a simple event. So simple events are one outcome. We don't deal with them that much because they're, they're simple, so they're easier to do, but we have them every once in a while. Other events you denote with a capital letter E. Well, actually any event you can denote with a capital letter E or F or G. There's nothing special. They just said E because event, the word starts with E. So let's continue with this American Roulette example. You're going to spin American Roulette, the American Roulette wheel once. And this is called the betting board for roulette. So it's a board with all the numbers. You have your outside bets on the outside edges. You've got your inside bets inside the numbers from 0 down through 36. And we want it to bet on the second dozen, right? We put our chip right here on the second 12. What that means is that we're placing a dozen bet. A dozen bet means you're betting on all 12 numbers in that section, which would be all of this, where those lines come around and wrap around it. So 13, 14, 15, down through 24. That's a dozen bet. Now remember, you don't have to memorize any of that. It's all in the appendix right here, a dozen bet, right? When you bet your number are on 12 numbers in the region. So for example, I've got letter H down here in this picture. Letter H means you're betting on all 12 of those numbers and so on. Okay, so is define the event E second dozen. Well, that would be 13 up through 24. I'll list them all out this time. So 13 up through 24, including them. Is E a simple event? 
well, no, 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 right? E is not a simple event. There are 12 ways that you could land on the that second dozen. Just a side note for you, four is a simple event. Um, let me just make a little note of that. I just added a little note right here um, that event E is a simple event. All right, so then this event E, right, and you can have lots of different events. Usually if you're gonna do multiples, you'll name them E, F, G, and so on. But this event E, which is the second dozen, is not a simple event. So we're gonna find the probability of E. Well, we already know what that means in words, so they just want us to find the number. If they want it in words, they'd say, you know, in the context or something like that. So they just want that number, and now let's think. There's 12 numbers in that, that is in the second dozen, and there's 38 numbers total. So the probability of E is 12 out of 38, which is 0.3158, or 31.58%, because that's, I wouldn't lie to you, that's what 12 divided by 38 is. Great. I think I'll add to this a little component here that just says explain its meaning in this context. So if you want to explain what P parentheses E means, it's that there's a 31.58% probability that the ball will land on the numbers 13 through 24 by random chance. Again, P stands for probability, E stands for event E. So I'm explaining the probability and then I'm explaining the event E for my context using my words. And the note down here just reminds us that we have all this in that appendix B. We don't need to memorize any of it. It will all be just given to you for your exams over probability as well as the final exam. So don't worry about memorizing it. Worry about knowing how to use it.